have their own story to tell. Some are being hand-reared after their mothers rejected them. Others are temporarily checked over and sent back to mum full of milk. From newborn to three months old, they are cared for by specially trained panda nannies. Just like human babies, they need regular feeding and plenty of sleep to prepare their little bodies for growing up. At 40 days old, this youngster has opened its eyes and is already five times heavier than when it was born. It is a panda mini-me. This is down to fat-rich milk, and at this age, they get it five times a day. Milk is baby food for now. After six months, they will also be able to eat solids. For pandas, that means bamboo. Oh, look. Come on, Gawa. Baby Gawa, with nannies in attendance, is preparing for her very first bath. When you're just a few days old, everything is an adventure. She's right on the edge. If you're not careful, you're gonna fall in, baby. Careful, 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 careful. Oops, a daisy. There's one way to do it. She's fine. Anything Weaver can do, Gawa can do as well. In comparison to Gawa, Weaver is looking strong and confident. So much so, she's taking the hard way out of the waterhole. Up you come. You can do it. You can do it. Wendy lends a helping trunk. Bit of help? Or is that a hindrance? No, that's help. <laughs> In times of real need, the nannies are still there for her. That is so lovely to see. Look, she's getting crowded round by other elephants. They see that she's struggling a little bit. He's just helping her out. It's a trunk coming down. That's really wonderful. Do you know, that's sort of a testament to how much Weaver has come on. She's pushing herself. She's testing her abilities. She's back on dry land. Now, it's Gawa's turn. Oops. Oh, I think you've come up too soon. That baby's going to struggle. Whoa, she's almost doing the splits. Oh, my goodness me. Bambi. Up you come. Come on. Up you come. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, I see. At this age, she has limited energy reserves. Quickly, she's overwhelmed with exhaustion. Baby elephants can perish stuck in the mud. Her head's flat down in the mud. She's, she's really tired. The adult members of this herd sometimes lack the experience to deal with problems. Normally, herds are led by an older matriarch who would know how to get Gawa out of this maze. Benjamin has to show them the easy way out. Just trying to encourage them out. Okay, Benj is just going to go in and see if he can push them out. That's the one. <laughs> that's doing it. Yeah, that's helping, definitely. Look, she's coming out. Out you come. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Keep coming. Yeah, she's out. Whew. Look at that. That's ridiculous. Look at that. That is one very happy, very muddy baby elephant. Good boy. Hey, my darling. Hi. Horace was rescued about five months ago. Just like Harriet, it thought his mum was hit by a car. He was just found sitting by her body. He was not even two weeks old. He was very traumatised, uh, very dehydrated, and 
he's made a really good recovery and he has created this amazing life for himself at Twala. But as much as it's, it's lovely for Horace to have a serval and a diker and a dog and domestic kittens as friends, it would be really good for him to actually start learning about being a monkey. And this could be his big chance. Come on. Another orphan has just arrived at the centre. This is Jackie. She is also an orphan vervet, a um, little bit younger than Horace. She's probably three and a half months old now. What a clever girl. Hey. Uh oh. Jackie lost her mum too and is still very traumatised. She's going to need lots of love and, and reassurance. But if she can form a relationship with Horace, that would also be great for her because obviously <laughs> the most comforting thing for her would be to be with another monkey. Horace! Horace! Come on. Come. It's an important meeting. Good boy! If they get on, Horace will help Jackie become more confident. I am right here, Jackie, so you don't need to freak. OK, we can just do our own thing, OK? What do you think? And Jackie will teach Horace what it's like to play, climb and learn with his own kind. Hello, Horace, special boy. You mustn't be jealous. Gently, Jackie, be nice. Come on, let's be friends. There we go. Oh, good girl. Oh, good girl. Well done, Horace. Yes, and you're being such a gentleman. I'm very proud of you. They are getting on so well. You know, monkeys are into everything, and now that we have twofold monkeys, there's going to be no peace. Horace and Jackie can now grow up together here at Twala. <laughs> And Sarah hopes that when they're older, they will join the centre's monkey troop. I do my best to teach them what, what I can, but there is no better way for them to learn than from each other. There's something beneath my feet that if you didn't know, I reckon you'd be pretty hard pressed to guess what. Now, I'll give you a clue. It's a kind of animal, but it's not a mole or a rat or anything like that. It is, in fact, a bird. David Steele is a warden here on the Farne Islands. He's hoping to reveal to me who's responsible for engineering this subterranean world. Uh, no, nothing in that one. No. Oh, got one. Have you? Yeah, I've got one. Yes, I've got one here. Here we go. This should be quite interesting fun. Here, sir, is <gasps> an Hi. adult puppy. Look at that. Look at you. Say hello to the world. Puffins spend most of their lives at sea, but when they return to land, they become burrowers. You can see um, how puffins dig their, their holes. They've actually got big claws. I don't know if you can see them on the end of the feet yeah. there. Really sharp claws. Extremely sharp claws, and they'll actually just dig their bows with those claws and, and the bill. So uh, that's, that's it. They dig so fanatically for one fluffy reason. Now, is there a puffling in there? Well, Do we I, know? I mean, I, well, they're hoping so. Let's, I'm just going to put him down, just keep him to one side okay. there. Okay, and, and, and is he quite happy there? He is. I'm, not... I'm going to pass you, if I can get the chick out, I'm going to pass the chick to you. Oh, yeah. This is my first puffling. So this, this will be the first time this puffling has seen the outside world, so I'm just oh, going to put it in your hand. <gasps> there you go, sir, if you oh, can just... Oh, look! I'll just get a bit of grass out of your hair. That's it. Oh, look, hi! Hi there, can you see? Come and say, meet your adoring public. There we go, look at that. That is a puffling. So he'll spend about 40 days down this dark, damp hole, and then, under the cover of darkness, without parents' consent, he's going to walk to the sea. And he'll spend the next three years on the sea before eventually returning to breed as a breeding adult. And life for them can be 30, 35 years. Now, listen to you, I'm going to put you back with your mum in your burrow underground. So is this right? I just Yeah, just pop put them, them down. In. Puffins lay only one egg a year. So every puffling is precious.
That's why they dig their burrows up to two meters long to keep their young safe from voracious predators such as the great skua. With 80,000 puffins here, this is a city of seabirds, all tucked safely beneath the ground. On these islands, these cute little birds have constructed an astonishing complex. A staggering 80 kilometers of tunnels and burrows. Essentially, this is the most excavated piece of real estate anywhere in the UK. This is four-month-old Manji, an orphan baby white rhino that lives here at Care for Wild Africa. It's a nice, wonderful morning. Did you sleep well, my boy? Did you sleep well? A rescue center founded by Petronelle Newvoet. For me to be able to work with them and they allowing me in their space is everything for me. She has over 20 years experience working with wildlife and his surrogate mum to over 20 rhinos. You can't fly with me, my dog. You cannot fly with me, I'm too small. <laughs> Petronelle's rhinos are all at different stages of rehabilitation. Some are large enough to roam free in a wild reserve. But rescue babies need care around the clock. Happy baby, happy baby, happy baby. And baby Manji is her biggest challenge yet. Manji means place of the stars. And he's a star. He's a star in my life. He's the youngest rhino that Petronelle has ever rescued. OK, jumps in first, jumps in first. At just two days old, his mother was killed by poachers for her horn. And he too was attacked with a machete and received near fatal head injuries. In every rescue, the first 48 hours are crucial. Petronelle didn't leave Manji's side. He was so small and so skinny. The blood loss was immense. And I called everyone I know. I just know, hey, we're going to save this one. And after intense medical treatment, doctors managed to save him. Manji is the survivor of survivors. He's a brilliant little one. I'm very, very proud of him. And I love him. I love him to bits. Manji now needs to learn how to be a wild rhino. And Petronelle is determined that he and all her orphans return to where they belong. There was never a choice for me in looking after these giants. It's a journey. It's a lifelong commitment. I want them to be free. I want them to be in the wild. White rhinos are highly social mammals, and a crucial part of their rehabilitation is to become part of a herd. It's time to come out. Playtime, playtime. Since arriving, Manji has been living in this small intensive care unit with other rescued baby rhinos. Petronel is pleased with the progress he's making. You know, he will at one stage will have to fight for territory. So he needs to be strong in character. He needs to be a leader. And that's what I want and I see it in him. I can clearly see it in him. He's a fighter. He wanted to live. Definitely, he wants to live. But this will not be his permanent home. We want to release him back into the world. They hurt animals. They like the socialism. They play, they mud bath. If I see him doing well in that stages, I know he will do well outside there. Manji is now strong enough to learn how to fend for himself. And his whole world is about to change. I'm so proud of him, you know, I'm so proud of him. He didn't give up. So how can I give up on him? I will never. He didn't give up.